Yes, it's the Dragon Dagger. Hello all you out there in YouTube land, this is Trans8010 and I'm back with a second re-review. That's right, this is videos that I think are really subpar or I just think that I can do better or just due to extreme fan demand. I've been under creative block lately just because with the upcoming holidays my uh, schedule is just insane at work. Being that I work in a retail outlet, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas are some of our busiest times of the year. So I haven't really been able to do some videos. I would like to know that I would like you to know that I am planning on doing some current stuff mostly with the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line because I think it is a very excellent line. But since I don't want to drag this video out for too long, here it is. Released in late night 1993, early 1994. I think it's more early 1994 than 1993, so forgive me for that. So released in 1994, it is the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Dragon Dagger. The weapon and uh, overall uh, calling uh, unit used by the Green Ranger, voila, here, to uh, summon the Mighty Dragon Zord, featured Meow. The box itself is, well, it's not a really great box. It's, it's really, really a bad Photoshop job. I mean, you just have a picture of the toy right here, and it's really just cut in half with the window box for uh, the dra so you can see the Dragon Dagger. I do love that instead of using uh, original artwork like they have in the past with uh, the five Power Rangers here with their arms crossed, they actually use the original Sentai uh, publicity images of uh, the Dragon Ranger, Burai, the Dragon Ranger, using the uh, Jusoken, which is what this thing is in Japanese. But like I said, it's like the nice little, it's the starburst, it's, uh, it, it's, it's just blah. Really, the only thing that is selling this toy was the phenomenon that it became. And the same goes for all corners of the boxes. It's basically just the same thing over and all, just with a really big font dragon dagger. The back of the box, there is no instruction manuals inside because everything you need to know is right here. It looks just like the dragon's dagger. The Power Rangers use to summon the mighty dragon sword. Dragon sword summons, ranger alert, battle call, and push to activate clashing dagger sounds. I got some double A batteries right here. Yes, it takes double A's. And we will go ahead and try this out as soon as I get this box wrapped up. And of course, like all Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, there is the bio cards. You collected all 18 of them, but as you've noticed from a previous review, there actually was a second number 18. That's right, Dragon Dagger and Power Gun Sword shared the 18 card. Whether this was just a mix-up at the factory, I don't really know, and I don't really care at this point. Just want to get this thing wrapped up as quickly as possible. We have, once again, the story of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and each of the eight six figures that you could collect. Although, Tommy the Green Ranger was only available with the Dragon Zord. But it is really cool to see him and the other Power Rangers all lined up together. Another interesting note, if you've noticed in my other previous reviews, they did not use the prototype figures, they used the actual production figures with this uh, very, very uh, cheap and rushed uh, catalog. Alright, so we're done with that, now we will just open her up. I forget which one do I usually open up, I think this end, this end's where I usually open up. And the Dragon Dagger just comes right out. And it's in a nice little foam block. You won't see foam anymore these days, people. That's right, a product introduced in probably the 50s and 60s and gone by the 1990s. Another thing you also notice that this Dragon Dagger does have the sharpened pointed tip. Later on into production, when the show was becoming ultra violent, they decided that the tip needed to be uh, rounded. The Dragon Dagger, of course, is very, very, very cool. It's got a very nice hilt. The blade is just a little too short, and this actually fits more of an adult hand very nicely. It's a little small for an adult hand, but it does fit very nicely. 
Another thing is uh, does have a very nice little uh, vacuum metalized paint job or uh, gold chrome as it's more affectionately known as for the uh, dragon coin. Every other little detail inside of course is with a uh, green stickers here and a little green sticker there. Nice little flames or little characters right on the hilt. Does missing a little gold pipeline in the paint job here, but that's more or less just, you know, just a nice little nitpick. It's very nice that we actually did get something from the Green Ranger other than the Dragon Zord when released with this toy. There's several toys that we did not get in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers when it was originally released. Of course, it's not a real working flute. It's more electronic. So, take the little battery cover off and we'll put the batteries inside and we'll see if this thing, let's see if my batteries are good for once. And they just slide in like so. <laughs> and you saw me playing around with this in my previous review and I think I went a little too got a little too carried away with it. Sorry for that. So here we go. Button sound number one. Nice, huh? That would call the Dragon Zord, bring it to uh, the shores from the sea to the shores of Angel Grove Harbor to the usual uh, fisherman's district and then of course into battle. That sound is pretty pathetic. I have it's been like that ever since I've had it. I really don't remember the sounds ever really degrading. I never really used this toy as much because since it's a roll call toy, especially usually supposed to have friends with it. And uh, my friends usually brought their own little dragon daggers and whatever, so and I was never ever the Green Ranger, so really don't explain that. I think it's more or less on Bandai of America's part using a really, really bad voice chip just because the sound for the original toy, which I'll get to later, was very different. Then we got the third button, which is the, of course, the battle alert. That's the, the tune that would arm the Dragon Zord and it would fire its missiles or use its drill tail and so on and so on. And then this sound, That is your dragon clashing. You're supposed to basically hold it down and what swipe. But to me, I always used it as the power beam because in a couple of episodes, you did see a little green beam come that would emit from the blade, just for a little extra firepower. It does have a nice little mouthpiece, and the mouthpiece, of course, is very detailed as well. Another thing you may have noticed is the coin is facing vertically or I should say the whatever this is I guess it's a dinosaur footprint or whatever it's facing vertically but yet on this side it's facing horizontally and the reason for that is because when this toy was originally released in Japan they screwed up they actually faced the coin actually faced the coin sideways as you can see right here this is the actual Japanese toy and as you can see it is miss it's got the gold pipe trim here and it's got the coin facing upwards and of course the actual uh mouthpiece wasn't glued on like it is here like this this is this is glued on it was actually a separate piece that if you bought this new in the store the juice soaking you actually had to take the mouthpiece off i mean out of the foam tray and then place it on I'm not sure if it was supposed to activate a sound or not. I'm not exactly sure. I've never seen the juice soaking in real life. But it would make it really cool if you couldn't press these buttons unless there was like a trigger here you had to press down. But other than that, the toy itself is, from what I've been told and what I have been reading, you know, I do a lot of research for these things. It's really... It, it's almost like 100% the same toy as the original Jusokin from 1992. 
All in all, it's very, very nice. These do command very, very high prices, and with the upcoming 20th anniversary of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, these toys are probably just going to skyrocket in value, especially if you find one mint in box. And because these toys were very, very hard to find back in the day, and because this particular piece was only available for one year, when the others had maybe two years shelf life, and the others, of course, were very, very highly manufactured. It's very... It's, and because of the popularity of the Green Ranger, of course, this makes for a very, very popular, highly sought-after piece. If you can find one and you do have the money, I would suggest you go ahead and get one. This is a must for every single Power Rangers fan. It's, and with the upcoming holidays, this would make a really great Christmas gift idea for, you know, your favorite Power Ranger fan. All in all, I do say the actual design of this dagger really does look like it could work as both an offensive and, of course, a very nice musical weapon. And the other thing I wanted to point out was this sound here. In the original show, Burai and, of course, Geki of... Koro Sentai Jew Ranger would actually play this nice little calming, soothing melody to uh, basically soothe the Dragon Zord or, you know, to release any, uh, any tensions that they may have had. You know, Burai dying and Geki reconciling with that. And then, of course, you know, music does calm the Savage Beast. So this was more like a do, 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 or, or something like that. Just a very nice, soothing melody. And that is it. That is the Dragon Dagger review. Like I said, very nice little design. Um, it's a, definitely a very nice conversation piece. Definitely one of those really great relics of the past. And, of course, a very prized collectible. So... Hope you all enjoy this second and final review of the good old Dragon Dagger. This is Transado 10 and I am signing off.